seeing as you guys enjoyed the last unsolved crime video so much, I decided to team up with my good friend Vidif22 and bring you four more unsolved crimes that will leave you creeped out and scratching your head as to what happened. If you haven't already, once the video is done, please go subscribe to my friend Vidif22 as he makes great videos on very obscure topics that you won't find anywhere else on YouTube, and that's a promise. If you have a story you'd like to share in a future video, or just want to suggest a case, be sure to send it in at swampdweller.net. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to never miss a future video. Now, let's get into these crimes that'll keep you up tonight. Number 1. Where is Adele Marie Wells? For 61 years, Adele Marie Wells has been missing with no trace of where she went. Just 7 years old at the time, Adele was a second grade student at Jefferson Elementary. On this day in particular though, Adele had stayed home sick with a cold. Sometime during that day though, she decided she wanted to go to the school to perhaps see her friends. Apparently, she stopped at her grandmother's house along the way, which is just a few blocks away from the school. The last time anyone would see Adele was leaving her grandmother's home that afternoon. She never ended up at the school and sadly has never been heard from again. This is truly sad and tragic as a missing child is surely the worst feeling possible for a parent. Local Flint police state, that they had very reliable reports of a young unknown male carrying a small girl to a dirty, black Chevrolet. Witnesses say the girl was between 8 to 10 years old by the looks of it. All the reports say that this sighting took place near the creek on Lewis Street. The young male described as a light-skinned, African-American who had a gray coat and red socks on. No one has ever identified the male and it is unclear if this man was even the abductor of Adele. There were reports of other children telling their parents about a suspicious car luring kids in with the promises of candy. Adele's family continues to carry the burden of wondering what happened to her. Adele has a family of nine, and I'm sure they all want justice for this case as I do. What happened to Adele? Did this alleged African American male kidnap her? Did someone else scoop her off the streets? Or did something more mysterious happen? Number 2. The Brutal Attack and Murder of Sherry Lynn McEwen On the afternoon of October 7, 2013, Sherry Lynn McEwen would meet a grim and abrupt end. At the time, Sherry Lynn had recently just returned from visiting Las Vegas for the weekend. Sherry Lynn's friends mentioned nothing was out of the ordinary at the time she was dropped off at her home. Shortly after, though, a call to 911 came from her home. First responders rushed to the scene in 40-year-old Sherry Lynn's Estaire, Ontario home. They arrived to find Sherry Lynn critically injured. She had been assaulted extremely violently. Soon after, Sherry Lynn was pronounced dead and had succumbed to her injuries. Until this day, the murder of Sherry Lynn McEwen remains unsolved. While researching this case, I quickly noted the Ontario Provincial Police really haven't released many details about this case. There has been no confirmation on who actually called 911 from the residence that day. Officials collected forensic evidence from the crime scene, but it seems nothing has been done with it, at least nothing the public knows already. Investigators have looked into Sherry Lynn's husband and friends but no real motives or animosity could be found. My thoughts kind of lead towards a potential home invasion gone wrong. I've heard cases about squatters invading people's homes when they leave for trips, and when the owners returned, they were brutally murdered. 
Many of those cases were from Canada. Could it be linked? Possibly. At the end of the day, though, this case is unsolved, and any new information would be greatly appreciated. Number 3. The Tragic Story of the Unidentified Lime Lady On April 16th, 1980, the decomposing body of an unidentified young woman was found on the shore of the North Canadian River in Oklahoma. She had been found with three bullet wounds, which officials were able to connect to a 45 caliber revolver. Officials say, when she was shot, one of the bullets actually hit a dime or a coin of some sort, suggesting that she was clothed at the time of her death. Not only was she clothed, but she watched her killer walk toward her as she died. The killer was facing her and walking closer to her as he fired the revolver. Now, why do officials call this Jane Doe the Lime Lady? Well, the person who committed this crime attempted to speed up the decomposition process by pouring quicklime on the remains. Ironically enough, it had the opposite effect and actually preserved the body providing a sort of mummification effect. Not much came from the investigation. There was no sort of identification on the victim's body. Sadly, back in the 80s, DNA testing wasn't around yet and this case had nothing to go on but an artist composition of her face. The Lime Lady had blonde to light brown hair that reached down to her shoulders. She had plenty of freckles and a light complexion. She had a heart-shaped tattoo above her left breast. She has an apectomy, scar, and extensive dental work. In 2014, police were able to obtain a potential DNA profile for the victim. Until this day, though, nothing has come of this case, and the Lime Lady remains unknown. Number 4. The Unsolved Homicide of Greg Hart Nearly nine years ago, a cruel act of violence ended the life of Greg Hart before his time. It was March 13th, 2010, and Greg Hart was hanging at a local bar named The Red Room. Little did anyone close to Greg know, this would be his last night out on the town. Greg was seen leaving the Red Room bar around 1.40 a.m., where he was alleged to have walked to a nearby IHOP restaurant, which was apparently a spot he would frequent. After this, his friends claimed they didn't see or hear from him for two days, which he was subsequently found dead in the Woonasquatucket River by his friends and family who were searching for his whereabouts. Greg had been stabbed to death. He had multiple defense wounds on his body, showing he did put up a great struggle. His phone was found smashed into three pieces. He was found floating along the riverbank, and the police ruled his death as an accidental drowning due to him being so intoxicated. They tried to explain his defense wounds are nothing more than wounds from a drunken fall. His friends and family refused to believe it was a drowning, though. Greg was a certified driver and a very strong swimmer. Being drunk could impair that, but it still just seems a bit too fishy. Greg's grandfather took pictures of his body before it was embalmed and found that he had a broken eye socket, a damaged nose, and cuts on his hands and bruising on his hips. He also had odd, small holes on each shin, clear signs of an altercation. At the time of his disappearance, the Red Room nightclub was owned by the wife of a Providence police detective. His family feels his case was never investigated properly because of a conflict of interest. Another detective also owned the land on which the bar sat. Is it possible, like many other cases covered on this channel in the past, that police could be covering up something? Conflicting evidence about the phone found on Greg had caused the case to move slowly. The phone was in the water for a subsequent amount of time, the police said, which made it unusable 
and the texts and calls on the phone are lost. But couldn't they just take a look at phone records for that? Until this day, though, the death of Greg Hart remains unsolved. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed these unsolved cold cases, be sure to give this video a like and share it with your friends. The more likes, comments, and shares this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes, which helps a ton in solving these cases. Believe it or not, I have had many investigators email me and tell me what we are doing here in the swamp with these videos really does help the cases. It is very much appreciated that you do support these videos the way you guys do. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my friend, Vidif22. He is easily one of the most underrated channels in the horror space. Show him some love. It's very much deserved. If you are new to the swamp, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss a new video. I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you have a case, or a story you'd like to share on the channel, be sure to send it in at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.